exclusive offers and discounts. NYPD Pizza seriously good. Suns get the Warriors tonight. We're with Taylor Morrison, Tom <coughs> Arizona Sports Desk, Paul WC and Arizona Sports 98, 7 FM. Grass by Hart, by the backboard, the Warriors. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Morning Glory. My name is Eddie Law. Uh, just listening to a bit of a local sports here. Um, apparently, the Suns playing the Warriors tonight. So anybody that's a Suns fan should absolutely avoid that game because Steph Curry is going to rape everybody on that team. <laughs> Not literally, obviously, but it's going to be a murder. So um, uh, yeah, Suns at Warriors. I don't know if Suns at Warriors. It doesn't matter. Suns versus Warriors anywhere is an awful game to watch if you're a Suns fan. So I'm going to avoid the fuck out of that. Anyway, um, good morning, everybody. If you haven't seen the show before, I just talk about literally whatever's on my brain. And this morning, I can't help but think about the stupid primaries yesterday. Um, and I say stupid because I'm trying to get away from politics more and more. I talk about it way too damn much. And uh, yesterday, I had the primaries in New Hampshire. Uh, Bernie Sanders getting a pretty sizable win on, on the Democrats. And then, uh, oh, shit. And then Trump winning the other one. My favorite is Greg Popovich, you know, uh, San Antonio Spurs head coach. His reaction to it was just like, he just, uh, who was it, um, fuck, what's his name? David Aldridge is, uh, is, uh, is a TNT correspondent, right? And he's, he's, he basically does all the, all the, all the, all the courtside interviews and all that. And he has Greg Popovich, which he always, we all, he always gets after the first quarter or so. Um, and he goes, um, yeah, you want to hear election results? And Popovich can't help it. He stops, he's already walking back to the bench. He stops, comes back, and, uh, and says, all right, yeah, well, give it to me. And David Aldridge goes, uh, Bernie Sanders and, or he goes, uh, Sanders and, uh, Trump. And Popovich's face is just like, he just shakes his head and walks away. It's the best shit ever. Um, and look at me, think of it this way. I mean, like, I mean, it, we're in a comedy. This is not real. It can't be real. This has to be some kind of like elaborate television show or elaborate thing for his, his little reality show that you're fired shit. You know, and then uh, it's fucking incredible. So I couldn't help it. I had to listen to his little victory speech that he gives every time that he that he thinks he wins something, and um, immediately starts just repeating himself over and over again. You know, we're gonna make America great again. We're gonna win. <clears throat> I used to do his voice okay, but now I can't do it. Now I sound like like a half retarded shack. But um, um, uh, yeah, dude, he just kept repeating himself over and over and over again. We're gonna make America great again, and blah 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 blah. And all this shit. We're gonna make deals. We're gonna take care of our vet. Look, it's all talk. And the funny thing is, you know, on the other side, Bernie Sanders gave his victory speech, and um, at the same time, you know, he, he just says shit. It's the same shit he's been saying. Which I mean, good, you know, good for you for being consistent, but you're still not explaining how you're gonna do this shit. And I've heard, I've heard people say, oh, he's gonna do it like this. He's a, uh, you know, he's put out this information like this, and I'm like, yeah, okay, but still doesn't give you step by step what the fuck he's gonna do you know so it's really weird and i'm i find it and this is the last thing i'm gonna talk about politics i guess today um i find it laughable that he thinks he's gonna get the uh the one percent to pay their fair share good luck with that do you know why those guys are one percent why those people are one percenters if you want to call them that it's because they fucking know how to avoid paying taxes good luck bernie god damn no one ever fucking thinks about that shit ever you want to blame the one percent for controlling this country and you don't think they're controlling this country. It's fucking incredible. So, am I saying there's no way to do it? No. Am I saying that it's that easy? They're just, they're just gonna pay their fair share? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not that fucking easy. You know what I mean? Middle class is gonna get punched right in the balls too from that from whatever tax plan. Now, I'm not saying he's like the worst candidate because he's not. He's probably better than most. Um, definitely better than Hillary in my opinion. But um, yeah, it's so weird. The guy is gonna be like, you know, who, who's getting over? And I know, I, I said I was gonna stop. This is the last thing right here. The guy, that 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 that, that guy from Ohio is the one that's like, that's gonna be like the dark horse for the for the Republicans, I think. Uh, Kasich or whatever his last name, whatever his name is. Um, he's gonna be the 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 bad the the uh, dark horse, I think, as far as the, the the GOP nomination. So we'll see what happens. Um, MMA stuff. Obviously, you know. John Jones thing and then BJ Penn coming back 197. Um, it's it's a weird time. Every you know what I I I basically made peace with the fact that it's never gonna be. There's no there's no normal in MMA, and I like that. I'm I'm glad I'm happy with that. I don't want no I don't I don't I don't want MMA to be like you know I don't want to be able to look at the MMA picture and be like business as usual. Ben Roth was fighting JDS. Okay, 
if, if, if they made this fight maybe like a fight or two ago for, for Dos Santos, I would have told you Ben Rothwell was fucked. But now I can't say that shit. You know what I mean? I, I bet against Ben Rothwell every time he fights and every fucking time this son of a bitch proves me wrong. You know, so, like again, had this fight happened maybe two, three fights ago, I would have said JDS is going to knock Ben Rothwell's clock off. But hey, hey, I don't know. This, I don't know now. Who knows now? Um, and uh, it, it, it's weird because JDS is just, uh, he's one of those guys that's hanging on way too long. <laughs> um, not necessarily because he's been around way too long, but because he, uh, you know, he's got, I mean, he's got punched in the head so many times. He's not even the, he's not even the same guy you can tell, you know. He's, he's off. He's way off. He's, like, he's gotten so much damage. I mean, I mean, good for him for, for being resilient and fighting through things and trying to come back and, and, and trying to get his title back every time he's on there. He's, I'm trying to get my title back. Uh, you can't lose to Ben Rothwell, man. You just can't. You can't lose to a fat Viking. You just can't do it. You, know, you, you got you to gotta beat that guy. He loses to Ben Rothwell, man. I'm like, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be like, look, man, you're Gabriel Gonzaga now. A dangerous guy that people don't mind watching. But you're not going to go anywhere, you know? So, um, Kane's dangerously close to that. Uh, Kane's more in a, in a dominant crew. Mm, I can't even say dominant crew. Dominant crew is actually, you know. Well, yeah, kind of. He's kind of, kind of in, the, in the dominant crew's uh, range. Just unfortunate, you know, injury after unfortunate injury, especially with his back injury. He has He got surgery for it and all that, but it's one of those injuries that might linger for a while. So who knows when he's coming back? Uh, the Verdum injury is a funny one because you know he's he's only injured because uh, Stipe, him fighting Stipe on pay per view wasn't gonna get him paid enough, you know. So uh, and that's the thing about Verdum, he's got to shut the hell up. That yeah, I, I, someone sent me that picture. Like I had, you know, I saw first of all, I saw it right away as soon as he posted it. But um, people started sending me that picture of of, uh, of McGregor's arm or of uh, Verdum's arm up McGregor's ass in that Photoshop picture. And I'm sitting there going, really, dude? That's how that's how you that's how Brazilian shit talk. I'm gonna put my arm up your asshole. Do you enjoy that shit, Verdum? You enjoy putting your arm up dude's buttholes? That's that's I find that disgustingly weird. Yeah, but do you, Verdum? Like doing that kind of shit, you know? Uh, it's a new world. People are accepting more shit, you know, weird shit more and more. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Verdum's gotta shut the fuck up, straight up. Verdum can't talk no more. He's done. He can't be talking anymore. It's over. Uh, you're, you're clearly not good at shit talking, and um, and McGregor's gonna tear you a new one if you try to keep you know going with it. Um, the other thing too that we we're talking about yesterday was was Conor possibly dropping the the featherweight title. Uh, I don't. This is not WWE. Can't, Kane ain't coming back. <laughs> you never know, okay? Jeez, stop hating on Kane. You and Jesse with the Kane shit. I know I'm just messing with you guys, but uh, you know I that. To be honest, you're, you're kind of right. Who knows? I mean, okay, you're not right he, that he ain't coming back, but but we don't know if he's coming back, right? He fucking might, he might well not come back ever. You know, all these injuries and stuff and being out so long. I mean, he's out of the title picture for sure, right? And he ain't going to be, you know, well, okay, maybe not for sure. The way the UFC works, they get title shots to anybody. Um, but, uh, you know, he ain't going to be right back in the title shot right away. He's going to have to win a fight or two, I think, to get a title shot, and prove that he's going to stay healthy, too, by the way, and be, uh, you know, be active and all that shit, so, that'll be uh, interesting, but anyway, Conor dropping the flyweight title, the featherweight title, possibly, I think they're going to wait and see what happens at, at, uh, at 196, um, but it just, seriously, every picture I see of Conor, it just looks like he has no intention of, of, of cutting to 145 ever again. Uh, that just it's, his body's big. He's a bigger guy now than he used to than he was just when he fought Aldo. You know he's packing on more power, more muscle um, to fight RDA because he's gonna need it. You know you, you're not, he's not gonna be able to fight RDA in that body that he had when he fought Jose. It's just not happening. You know RDA will just smash him. I think he's gonna try and show up bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, and I think he will show up bigger, stronger, and faster. And who knows what he's gonna do against RDA? That's another guy I can't really bet against because he's proven me wrong every fucking time. So I thought Brandau was going to knock him the fuck out. And then we saw the size difference, and I'm like, oh, shit. You know, like, Brandau's not even going to get close enough to hit him. And Brandau is not a, you know, Brandau just got submitted, so it's not like he's going to do much on the, on the ground, I don't think. But anyway, 
Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, if fucking Tom, I know it's Thompson. Tyron Woodley saying that Stephen Stephen Thompson's not ready for a title shot. Tyron Woodley can shut the fuck up too. Okay, just get the fuck out of here. Wanting a title shot because you're because you're one, you know you're the guy you fought blew his knee out during the fight, and then he beats uh, Dong Yum Kim and somebody else. Um, he's still not, to me he's still not enough. He's got to beat Condit. In my opinion, he's got to fight and beat Condit. That's got to be the next fight for both guys, and winner gets a title shot straight up. If Conda doesn't get it straight out, just a rematch, right? But I think Woodley Condit, winner, will get a title shot. I think that'd be fair. You know what I mean? But uh, but Tyron Woodley declaring somebody not ready for a title shot. Maybe you need to shut up, buddy, because you're not ready for a title shot. All right, dude? So, um, Robbie Lawler will outlast your ass. Easily. We'll go in, they'll be in the third, fourth round. You'll be gasping for air. Robbie will just get, be getting started. Um... Uh, what else we got here? Oh, this fucking guy. Oh, I know this piece of shit. No, fuck him. I'm not letting him in. Fuck him. No, this is... Whenever you're driving... On, when I'm driving to work, I always see the same people. They always leave at the same time, right? And, uh... This guy's a prick, so fuck him. Anyway. Um... Uh, yeah, it's kind of all I got as far as, I, as, far as I, I can remember. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike let me know yesterday. Reminded me. Um... Eddie Bravo's uh, Building an Empire. I guess it's an episodic thing. Um, drops today on flow, F-L-O, grappling.com. Um, check it out. I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm, as soon as I get to the office, I'm going to look for it. Hopefully, it's already out, and I'm going to watch it. God damn, nobody in Phoenix can drive. Um, but uh, uh, it's going to be... Yeah, dude, anything Eddie Bravo, I'll watch. I'm going to fuck. I learn every time I see Eddie Bravo explain anything... As far as jiu-jitsu goes, I learned something new. Um, and I'm entertained as fuck whenever he starts talking about uh, uh, um, conspiracy theories. I love those. I really do. You know what I mean? People, people, some people take them seriously. I don't. I, I find them hilarious and interesting. You know? Because what if, right? What, what if uh, all that kind of stuff he talks about? He talks about, you know, 9-11 being an inside job and all sorts of stuff. And Sandy Hook never happened and that sort of shit. Um... He's, it's interesting to listen to. I think it's fun. I find it fun as fuck. So, um, but again, who knows? He might be the only one that's right. And everyone else is wrong. How fucking nutty would that be? That it turns out Eddie Bravo was completely correct on everything he said, and we we're all wrong and stupid. You know what I mean? That would be a mind fuck. There would be people would be fucking playing in traffic if that turned out if that was true. They'd be jumping on the freeways and shit, just like fuck it. I don't know anything. Ah, boom. So. It'll be, a, that, that would be weird. Anyway, um, but definitely check that out. Flowgrappling.com. F-L-O-G-R-A-P-P-L-I-N-G.com. There you go. Um, just Google it. You can find it. And of course, I, I retweeted Mike's tweet yesterday. He sent me the, the trailer. The trailer will pump you up to see it. I promise you that much. You watch the trailer, that shit will, you'll be like, where the fuck is it? I need to see it now. Like, I wanted to see it yesterday. <laughs> and I have what I see. What it looks like is going to be episodes, which fucking drives me nuts because then I gotta wait for the next one which is bullshit so um, I was hoping for like an entire documentary I'd have dropped 20 bucks on it no problem but um, but from what I saw it looks like episodes so we'll see um, I prefer not episodes I prefer a whole documentary but again if you do episodes and the first one's really good it's like what they do with Narcos and all those other ones first Narcos episode was legit as fuck and you had to watch it first Breaking Bad episode was pretty damn good and you had to watch it the first Walking Dead episode was just like, whoa, what the fuck? And you had to watch it and keep watching. And once they got you hooked, it kept going. So that might, that might be the idea. Um, oh, they're doing the... Uh, I remember now that was something I wanted to talk about. It's kind of weird. Um, and, 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 well, it's kind of hooked up to that. To, to the uh, to the, uh, uh, the Eddie Bravo thing. In the trailer, he talks about how he was like shunned by the, by the jiu-jitsu community for a, while, for a long time. And then people wouldn't admit it. Now, now after the whole thing with he had with Hoyler and Meta Morris, you know, he gets a little more credit and everything. Um, I find it weird. Bravo loves Narcos. That's where he probably got it from. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I fucking love Narcos, man. That's the shit. I finished the first season, and I'm just waiting for the next one. Um, the shitty part is, again, episodic thing. Um, and I got to wait for the next one, and wait for the next one, and wait for the next one. I'd rather just binge watch everything. I love it. You know what I mean? I love doing binge watching shit. Cause I can watch it in like three, four nights. Like I did with Making a Murder. I watched like a, like two. The first night I watched six episodes, and then I watched like two a night after that. So, till I finished the, all ten. 
Anyway, um, yeah. So, anyway, so I find it weird that people still accept this metamorous bullshit. Um, not only the 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 way it's set up to where you know, run out of time to draw. You know, it's like how do you how do you fuck with Eddie Bravo's system? I'm pretty sure Eddie Bravo would not give a shit if Meta Morris adopted what he did, you know, his, his way. I hope they don't. I want EBI to get huge. I mean, come on. The next EBI is in Mexico City, and the winner gets 50 Gs? What? The guy that submits all of his opponents gets 50 Gs. Do you need any more incentive to try and finish your opponent? I don't think so, you know? You want exciting? I mean, come on. It was it, First of all, it was logic and common sense. Now, I don't know what the fuck how the Gracie's thinking, but this guy, he sounds more like a dipshit every time he talks and every movie he makes. You know what I mean? Fucking not paying his athletes. First of all, if, you remember, if I remember correctly, how the Gracie was one of those guys that bitched and complained and moaned about Dream not paying their athletes. If you remember that that promotion, uh, that, that uh, wannabe pride too, um, Dream would not pay their athletes. You know what I mean? And Holly Gracie was one of those guys that would bitch about that. And look what he does with Meta Morris. Just with the kids alone on EBI, nobody can compete with them. Oh, dude, the kids at EBI? First of all, I love that shit, okay? For example, with the NBA, you got to watch college basketball to see the future, right? To see future athletes. Um, and with the NFL, you got to watch college football. Um, you know, and, 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 uh, and you can't, uh, uh, not you can't, but you don't get... You know, I don't know, and I'm not saying you gotta put in those, you know, the, the college kids with the, with the pros or anything, but my point is, you gotta, you gotta watch, you, know, you gotta, put, you gotta invest a whole lot of time in other shit. In martial arts, they don't have minor leagues you can watch. You know what I mean? You'd have to go to tournaments, local, and then you can only really watch the local stuff. At EBI, putting in those, those, the, the, you know, the future stars of, of jujitsu, dude, you get, you know, like for example, all the ones that we watched so far, especially with the girls, like Mike just said right now, the girls are legit, but um. Oh, well, sun's gonna fuck with everything. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can block it. Uh, find out in a second. Yeah, fuck it. Anyway, but uh, especially with the with the girls, but I, I like the fact, there we go. I like the fact that uh, that we can um, see the future of jiu-jitsu. We can see the future stars. Like, what we want to say, I, you know, I was watching when, and then, you know, uh, what was that little girl, Grace? Who just, just molly wops other chicks, and... And uh, uh, she looks so unassuming, so weak, and so timid. And she just, when she starts rolling, that's her world, man. You can't fuck with her there. Um, I think she, the last time I saw her, no, it was the time before. She was against this chick that had won, this, this little girl that had won so many tournaments. And she was ranked whatever the fuck. And Grace got in there and just, you know, submitted her. It's great. Um, I like that kind of stuff. I find that the uh, it's weird. I was watching. Uh, so I went to a, to a where I work out the gym. I work out next door is, is a jujitsu academy, and uh, once in a while I step over there and hang out and talk jujitsu with the with the instructors and all that and some of the guys in there. Um, hit the gas, fuck face. Anyway, um, there'll be kids in there rolling. There's a kids class right before I go work out, so I'll go hang out and watch the kids or whatever and, and hang out with the instructor. He's, he's, he's a good dude. And um, I find that girls are better at jiu-jitsu than guys. The, the, the boy, like, little girls are better at jiu-jitsu than little boys. It might be the flexibility or whatever, but they are just, to me, the way it seems, they're just better. You know what I mean? This little girl submitted, submitted you know, her, her, her classmates fucking quickly. It was crazy. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, so anyway, so EBI is the shit. I mean, everyone needs, it, it just needs to be, it, it's going to be Metamorphs. Especially if Morris keeps fucking up the way they are. Like, yeah, sure, they get big names, but pretty big names on this, in, in this next EBI card. Um, or Menor Morris gets, you know, uh, 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 what do get? Gary Tonin and um, Husamar Pajaris. You know what I mean? Someone's leg's gonna get ripped off. Uh, two leg lock guys. Uh, I got Tonin in that, by the way. Uh, I know Pajaris is a beast and all that shit, but Tonin knows how to, Tonin knows how to, how to, how to, um, you know, defend all that stuff and, and finish with leg locks and all that. And they, watch it be some crazy, like, rear naked choke or an arm bar or something that wins that shit. Um, but I think my number one problem with, with Meta Morse is they don't pay their guys. Like, that's that's kind of it. You know, you can't be doing that shit. Especially when you're Halle Gracie who didn't get paid by Dream and all the other ones. So, um, who knows, man. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, 
if they change things up and started doing well again. But I just don't see it, man. I think Metamorphs is, is trying to be. Metamorphs is trying. It, it, it's it's again with the thing where the, where, where Gracie Jiu Jitsu, all the, everyone that does Gracie Jiu Jitsu, did not want to give any, any uh, Tenth Planet any credit whatsoever. You know what I mean? Until 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 Eddie Bravo made Hoyler look really silly. Even then, they tried to fucking. I mean, I don't know. Rogan talked about it on his podcast. Um, and so did Eddie Bravo. And literally, the podcast right after the event. Um, the, the next day or the day after, uh, they talk about how. Uh, one of the Gracie, the Jiu Jitsu magazines, the Gracie's run, they put up pictures and, and wrote the story and made it look like Hoyler dominated Eddie Bravo. And it wasn't until they had, you know, they got a ton of pressure, like a shit ton of pressure on them, that they that they basically told a true story. A lot of pettiness in Jiu Jitsu, man. Um, and unfortunately, it's all, it, it all seems to be coming from the Gracie family. So it looks like it looks like things are changing and getting better. So hopefully, you know, they, they continue to get better. And and uh, and Tenth Planet gets you know gets gets you know the credit that it's due. You know, so. Oh, all right, I, I gotta go. I'm like running out of water. I'm really fucking tired here. I'm like exhausted right now. So, um, if you missed BTL last night, it's gonna be up on YouTube today. I will tweet that out. This will be out on YouTube in a few minutes. Um, in the pocket today, myself, Nick Pilecki will be review. We're going over UFC Fight Night Vegas and talking about a few issues here and there. And then, um, and yeah, it should be it for today. Trying to do a breaking law with Eddie Law later tonight. But I uh, got some previous engagements that I might that that aren't guaranteed yet, or they, or they aren't set in stone yet. But I'm, if they are, I, I absolutely can't miss them. So um, I will let you guys know as, as, as you know as soon as I know whether or not there will be a break a BTL tonight. All right. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks Mike for coming on here um, again. The Eddie Bravo uh, I guess documentary series dropping today. FlowGrappling.com. F L O Grappling.com. I'm getting nothing for this. I am plugging it out of the simple fact that I love jiu-jitsu and I'm a huge fan of Eddie Bravo and 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu and it, I'm a huge fan of the story, of Eddie Bravo's story. So um, I will plug this for free forever. I don't give a shit. So definitely watch that stuff. All right. One day closer to death, ladies and gentlemen. So make every second count. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful... Yeah, you won't regret it. Mike's right. You will not regret watching this shit. The Eddie Bravo story will blow your mind. Because he's a regular dude that is just doing incredible things. So, um, yeah. Catch you guys later. Have a good day. Good evening for those of you overseas and in other time zones. And I will catch you guys later. By the way, school buses should never make left turns on busy roads. This is bullshit. There we go. See ya.